It's not the destination, it's the journey, they say. But sometimes, that journey does not have a road. And that's where the scrambler comes in. A couple of years ago, when Triumph and Bajaj came together and decided to make a bike, we were very excited. But it took them a quite a while to be able to come out with a product they were happy with. And finally, we're getting to see one of India's most awaited bikes of the year, the Scrambler 400X from Triumph. Welcome to The Driver's Hub. My name is Bhavneet Vaswani and this is a very nice bike. Let's get the design out of the way. First, from afar you can notice that the Scrambler 400 looks very similar to its elder siblings, the Scrambler 900 and the Scrambler 1200, the big boy. You come a little bit closer and then you can notice the differences between the speed and the scrambler. Like the extra rake on the front, the 19 inch wheels on the front with better rubber of course for off-road, wider handlebars that instead of aluminium, they're made from steel so that they're more robust, uh, a headlight grille and these flat foot pegs for better grip. Now when you come super close and start getting in touch with the bike, every bit of metal and plastic is with very good finish. The other thing that I personally enjoy from this bike was the split seat and the digital analog display which is very contemporary, very nice. It also gets some more stuff like an oil sump card to protect it from stones and an upswept dual exit exhaust which is a classic Triumph Scrambler trait. Moreover, all of what we just mentioned comes standard on the new Scrambler 400X. Of course, you have even more accessories you can fit but Bajaj wanted to make sure that any client that bought this bike got the full Scrambler experience. Talking about what powers this beautiful machine is a TR series 400cc block that we found in the Speed 400. It is pretty much the same block, a DOHC 4 valve head, liquid cooled engine with 40 bhp and 37.5 Nm of torque. But the tune is a little different. Most of its torque is available from 3000 rpm all the way up to 8000 rpm giving great mid range and the sprocket is now a tooth more in the front giving you a bit more engine braking which combined with the new tune is much easier to handle for a novice to go off-road. The gear I'm wearing in this video has been kindly sponsored by the boys at Rhinox, a brand made in India for riders by riders. For the past 10 years, Rhinox has been the go-to gear brand for every Indian, providing quality products at unbeatable prices. They sent over their Air GT4 riding jacket and Advento pants. Not only do you look like a pro, you're also well protected with level 2 shock protection on your elbows, shoulders, back, rear end and knees. Thank you so much Rhinox for providing this epic getup. Link to their online store in the description. Now given that this bike is designed to go over some rough terrain, the rear monoshock has been set up to handle over 150 mm of suspension travel. So best believe this bike is a pretty tall one. I'm 5'10 and I am barely tiptoeing. What is surprising is how slim the bike is under your bum. So it is not that difficult to tiptoe with both your legs even if you are slightly shorter than me. Now when it comes to the foot pegs, you are slightly ahead of your torso line making it a very comfortable riding position for long distances. Same goes with the handlebars. The handlebars are on risers so they are nice and upright giving you a tall upright position that is very good for long distances. However, while standing up given my height I felt like I was inclining onto the handlebars a little bit too much but someone who maybe 5'7", 5'8", will not have that problem. Having spent some time with the bike, I am happy to report that this TR Series 400cc engine is as smooth as we had witnessed in the Speed 400. Now, with this new state of tune, it has quite a lot of grunt in the low end and the ride-by-wire throttle is also very predictable. Sometimes we have witnessed ride-by-wire throttles to be rather notchy, but this one is very, very predictable, very good for a novice. 
The new side swept exhaust also adds a very nice burble and pop once the exhaust is hot. And talking about the brakes, uh, the front brakes have really good bite and a lot of feedback while the rear, when you switch ABS off, it still requires a proper stamp on that rear brake in order for it to lock up, which is good news for a noob like me. What makes this bike so easy to ride is its weight distribution. It's 52-48, making it a very balanced chassis, giving you quite a lot of confidence even on rough surfaces. The Scrambler 400X comes with 43mm upside down forks in the front and a right side up rear monoshock in the rear. Both of them can give you wheel travel of up to 150mm. Combine that with the very nice engine, the great ergonomics and the new 19 inch wheels in the front and this is one stable bike that can iron out bumps like anything. The Scrambler 400X can take your roadside works and speed bumps like a piece of cake. This is designed for the great outdoors and it is definitely a perfect match. The Scrambler feels very well settled on a smooth patch of twisties. The hybrid spine perimeter frame has been slightly tweaked and has a slightly longer wheelbase too, which provides increased stability at high speeds. The increase in overall weight and its higher centre of gravity has given it a lazier demeanour compared to the Speed 400 during transitions from left to right, but by no means does it ruin the experience. It still is a fun bike to thrash around and its compliant suspension setup actually adds up to your confidence when the road gets bumpy. Dropping anchor is provided by a 300mm disc at the front and a 230mm disc in the rear which do a great job at bringing the bike to a halt but could provide more feedback through the lever. All in all, the Scrambler is a great bike to ride though, a smooth bike that feels ready for anything you throw at it. The main reason for Triumph to work with Bajaj and try to bring a smaller displacement bike into their fleet is to attract a younger generation of Triumph clientele. So in this bike, you get the prize proposition from a Bajaj that is just 2.63 lakhs for a 400cc bike and you also get the good premiumness of a Triumph with great fit and finish and very good looks. And of course, who can forget the badge value that you would get from buying a Triumph and keeping one in your garage. Mm. So, this is a very nice bike with a lot of added goodies. What do you think? Would you pick the Scram 411 or would you pick the Yesdi Scrambler over this? Well, I won't. I would pick this specific bike, the Scrambler 400X, even over the Speed 400 just for its versatility. Do let us know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Is that okay?